Welcome to a special edition of the Happiness Podcast Project. We are live from Peninsula Self-Defense in Redwood City. Not our normal venue, but uh, Professor Eric Archer here has been kind enough to let us use uh, his lounge area and his facility. Uh, we had planned on, after getting the three podcasts out and try to, trying to tweak uh, our technical difficulties and be more professional, get a little help on a podcast. Well, I know you guys find it entertaining, so. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you find it entertaining that our production value is straight trash at this particular <laughs> moment. But we, we wanted to take some time off. Oh, yeah. And what we basically wanted to do was like perfect some of our process. Uh, but so many things started coming up that I really just wanted to get together and do a current events. Uh, some things that really strike to the heart of my personal beliefs and just some questions that I don't quite have to answer to, but I think that it's just interesting and I, I just want to talk it through with somebody. So last night I called up Scott and I said, dude, there's a lot of things going on and we should really just go and do a special events. I made a call and got us a place to shoot. So we're not in my hot ass apartment again. Mm. And uh, here we are. So this as I'm coining this, the social commentary issue, uh, special edition for Peninsula Self-Defense. So I'm Grover Reese of Guerrilla Combatives. And I'm Scotty of Warwick Unity. And we are at the Happiness Podcast Project. Happiness Podcast. So let's start the happiness. Uh, okay. Honestly, a lot of things are going on. It's not really, you know, it's concerning. It's not making me happy, <laughs> which is funny because happiness is your own personal responsibility. Yeah. But I see a lot of things that I just find odd and I don't know how quite to categorize it. So one of the things is um, a lot of, as everyone should know by now, Alex Jones has been deplatformized. Can we get a little bit more background information on Alex Jones? So Alex Jones, uh, uh, just from from what I know of him, he came to prominence in my mind in the late 90s. He was was a critic of uh, George W. Bush. And he, at this point, it was hilarious. He was anti-right wing, uh, very, you know, I mean, he was sensationalist. He was, there's a lot of hyperbole, but I mean, a lot of things he said came true. So one of the things he said is like, George W. Bush gets elected, uh, we will be into a war. And everyone- and Can I make a little straight commentary on that? Yeah. When has America not been in war? That's the only thing I gotta say. Uh, we, to, like, uh, actually, uh, the Clinton years were the longest, uh, I think it was four years. What about even Kosovo and all that? Uh, but but there was four years between four Kosovo years. and that. that there, okay. was, there was some semblance of peace. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as far as declared war, I mean, we, all out. Okay. We didn't declare war in Vietnam, so I guess you could, but it's definitely not peacetime, right? Yeah. Uh, but he would say that we would go to war, and we did. I mean, we, we invaded Iraq. As, as we all know, that that was a debauchery, uh, really destabilized the Middle East, led to a lot of different issues that we're having now, uh, and, and really set up, really shaped the world as to come. Uh, so, you know, I give it to him that he was right. Uh, he was an anti-globalist. He's always been anti-globalist, anti-nation building. And he stated, like I said, that the war would be history, historically correct. And he had a lot of things that were historically correct. Uh, what about, what are the, some of the points that he was spot on about? Uh, a, lot, a lot of things, he, he, he found some false flag operations. Uh, there was a false flag operation in Seattle where, um, I believe it was Seattle, where there was a, uh, Anti, so there was protesters put inside of a protest. Oh yeah, government. okay. And yeah. they were wearing like he actually did some really great investigative reports saying that like look they were wearing like government issue shoes, and like they all went to one house and all of this whole group surrendered together in one house and was treated really well by the police after they were like busting stuff up and causing a riot. And so there was a peaceful protest. The government had inserted some rioters inside the peaceful protest too destabilize that protest, which happens quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I know which, a certain, I mean, granted, my dad was a police officer, but I know police groups do do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, 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 I mean, just government groups in general. It just makes sense sometimes. But here's the problem with someone like that. Once it goes off the hinges and you want a conspiracy inside of everything because you found one or two, and you see everything as a conspiracy, then uh, you start doing weird things. So one of the weird things that Alex, Alex Jones did was, it was despicable. He said like Sandy Hook, they were all crisis actors. Mm. Uh, and so when I watched this whole process, I mean, I, I watched a lot of different people. I, I mean, I, I would watch uh, Alex Jones and Infowars. And right when he started saying like, all of these shootings with these children were mm-hmm. all fake and they were all crisis actors. I just, start, I just started, you know, uh, I mean, I did what I felt was the right thing to do is I unsubscribed. 
And would, I just didn't listen to him anymore. Would you think he, um, almost like he's inciting certain, uh, kind of like almost a riot, but on the digital I, media I, realm? I don't know sphere? if he's in certain riots, yeah. but if you go so far, the people you're going to attract are people who are willing to go that far. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I literally remember him when uh, when he was a huge Trump supporter. Donald Trump was the a beachhead of freedom. That's what he would call it. Because I'd see little clips and stuff like that. Or he would be on, like, the Joe Rogan. Was this, when was this pre-Trump running for president? No, no, no this, is like, this is like Trump, uh, a president. He went on the Joe Rogan experience. It was the first time I watched Alex Jones in a while. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, he's trying to make a beachhead of freedom. He's trying to do this. He's trying to do that. And I found it interesting, but you know, it was kind of like the same old spiel where you get really upset. That style, of, that style of uh, journalism that was really big in the '90s, like, very emotional, yeah, and, like like yeah. not a lot of facts, or or there's always an unknown source, and you know, it's just I, it always tickles me because like. <laughs> If an unknown source comes out for the Washington Post, they call it fake news. Unknown mm -hmm. source comes out for Alex Jones, they're like, oh, well, you know, I got a high up government source. And, uh, and, you know, he would sound like a angry pit bull all the time when he started talking. And so just looking at things like that, when I see a duality and and uh, a, a duality in the way that people say like, oh, well, this is true when it benefits me with an unknown source but if it doesn't benefit me and I don't like it it's not true mm. it kind of makes me shy away from people because the number one thing of being any type of any type of open-minded or critical thinking person is you have to stop and listen to the other side and if it's BS it's BS you, you make your own mm. you make your own uh, so essentially decision. unbiased neutral well it's impossible to be unbiased mm. But you have to listen and put your biases aside for a second. Then your biases will creep back in one way or another. Sure. Someone, I, I mean, for instance, I could be listening to somebody and then I could say, man, he made some really good sense. I kind of appreciated what he was saying. And then he turns around and says something that's really uh, detrimental to uh, LG, uh, you know, gay and lesbian or LGBT mm -hmm. or whatever we're calling it right now. Uh, you know, because I, I, I literally can't remember all of the... <laughs> I really, I literally can't remember every single well, thing that they put. I think out that there. goes on to another topic because I've heard some information. I don't know where I got it, but I've heard it where certain um, they're expanding it too much on the LGBT. Whoa, and they just keep adding on to the spectrum, and I think it's almost like uh, they don't want to add extra. I, I don't. Well, so yeah. so uh, we so just we can segue to that later, and I'll, I'll actually make a note to come back to it. Okay. But that's a lot of the fake news that goes around too. Mm -hmm. But just if somebody's saying something that makes sense and they say something like that, like, for instance, I think that it makes sense to have border and border enforcement. I think that illegal immigration should be cracked down upon. Now, when you somebody says, yes, we got to crack down on illegal immigration, I'm like, yeah, I'm all for it. When they say that legal immigration helps our country, illegal immigration can hurt our country. I said, OK, it can hurt the country under certain circumstances. But we know damn well that Walmart, Safeway and all these other people hiring as many illegal immigrants as they can to, to work, to work like. And just because they're not working directly for the company, a lot of the contractors, like when they're having something built, they'd have some illegal oh, yeah. building. Or when they're having, like the people who used to clean the floors at Safeway, it was funny uh, when I was a manager at Safeway and just talk about immigration for a second, then we'll go right back to Alex Jones because this kind of works into it. Um, like I remember one day, none of the floor crew showed up. Mm. And we called the floor crew boss and he says, all my people got deported. <laughs> and I said, what? I will send another crew. He's like, no, all of my people wow. got deported. His entire company shut down because 35 people he had working for him were all illegal. He knew they were all illegal, mm -hmm. but they, you know, this was, this was like in, in the late 90s, this was during the Clinton years. And so I, I look at it and I say, well, that's funny. That's really funny. Uh, because were they hurting or helping? Well, you could say that they're taking jobs, but nobody was going to come into a supermarket in the middle of the night and clean floors for mm -hmm. minimum wage. That wasn't going to happen. Or be out there in a hot ass sun yeah. while it wasn't building all happen. this infrastructure. Yeah. But so when you say illegal immigration needs to stop, I not only do I agree with that, but I think yes, you have to have control. You have to have control of your borders. It, yes, it can be a, a public safety issue. Yes, it can be a national security issue. However, when you start turning things illegal that you know damn well aren't illegal, if somebody comes to our border and they ask for uh, immunity because there's a drug war that we're fueling with our war on drugs mm. <laughs> and there's a 
fucking drug war in their country. And they're like, look, man, my brother died, my sister died, my cousin died. I took my kid and I fled to this country. This is the only place I can come to. I went all the way from El Salvador, all the way through Mexico, and you get here. They don't try to sneak in. They walk up to somebody and they say, hey, I want immunity. And then you take them and you're like, well, we're going to deport them. We signed that we signed these immunity guidelines mm. and to change the guidelines arbitrarily to say, well, look, it doesn't, we don't say gang wars, we're not, that doesn't make, that's not a, a issue. Well, that's bullshit. And, you know, so yes, I believe in uh, reinforcing our border laws, mm. but you can't change it, you know, uh, you, you can't change it. And so that was one of the things, like going back to Alex Jones, is that I see, I've seen a lot of things with him that like the ball he just kept moving the ball further and further to crazy town Mm -hmm. the question i have is does he have a right to be fucking crazy and still have a platform Mm -hmm. because looking at it and being really honest if if not i mean i see reports and like i don't trust all the numbers like i was just doing some research for this and i seen like one group that were surveyed, 85% of the people said that they got their news from Facebook. Now, first of all, if you get your news from Facebook, you're Ooh. a fucking idiot. Uh, what, what source was this? Uh, you know what? I, I, it was actually, it was actually, uh, it was an AP, it was an AP, uh, kind of like one of it, was, it was an Associated so Press impressed. ticker okay. on Google, on Google News, right? Mm-hmm. And it said, you know, and you have to understand though, this is a group of people. There was a young group of people. And they said they, you know, they got their news from Facebook, or people say they get some of their news updates from Twitter, or people say they, uh, hey, they get a lot of their news updates from uh, YouTube. Meaning that they now YouTube, they may be watching CNN on YouTube, they may be watching uh, MSNBC, they may be watching Fox on YouTube, they may be watching Infowars. But we have to start looking and really asking the question: Should these platforms be treated like a legitimate news media if people are getting their news from them? And if they should be treated like a legitimate news media, then what are we going to do? Because now if they're a legitimate news media, if they're a legitimate news source, you know, that people are uploading, then Alex Jones has a First Amendment right mm-hmm. not to be deplatformed, right? So because- what it comes to, to, like, Facebook being a, a company that's not owned by the government or something like that, where it's a for-profit kind of business... Right, but so, but, so, but so is ABC News, uh-huh. and so is MSNBC, and so is Fox, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and they they cannot, I mean, they can have their own slant on it, but like MSNBC can't say, we just refuse to show anything from this whole side. Uh, they, can, they can bash it, mm-hmm. they can make up something, and if you watch MSNBC ever, you know that they are very, very liberal slanted. Mm. Uh, if you watch CNN, CNN's liberal slanted. And here's the problem. If you watch Fox, Fox is super conservative. Mm. And so you're sitting here and where do you find it? Where do you find someone who's neutral? Mm. There's no neutral news anymore. And that's the problem we're having right now. And so I think a lot of people maybe go to Facebook uh, or maybe like go to Maybe they go to uh, YouTube and watch news sources because they can watch a Fox news source then search an MSNBC news search and a news source. And I've seen the same thing. See them talk about the exact same topic very differently and then even go outside of the country. Like I, I watched something from BBC and see their take on it. And then I formed my critical decision mm-hmm. from watching all three of those. And this is something I've been doing for years. And I'm using YouTube as a news source because quite honestly, if I watch just MSNBC, it would be just a regular, just a regular liberal slant. If I watch Fox, it would be a super conservative slant. I'm an independent. I've been an independent for years, and I want—I don't want someone to tell me what I think. I want to make my own choice, and so that's it's very- almost like ease of access. I mean, or ease of access because it's like the viewer's attention span is just so long right it's whatever comes in their feed whatever their beliefs are yeah. they just go right well, to well, that, well, there's algorithm that that feeds you that and which I, makes it even worse but what i'm saying is this there is no way there is literally zero way that if this is a legitimate news source mm-hmm. that somebody's first amendment right should be taken away because even hateful nasty horrible speech which by the way i think alex jones is a creep 
I think that he's gone far off the reservation, but that still has to be protected mm -hmm. because for every Alex Jones that they take off, they're going to take off four other people who, yeah. are, who are doing the right thing. It's like thing. slippery slope, basically. I don't even want to even say a slippery slope because that could be a fallacy. Mm -hmm. But the truth is this. If speech is protected, you've got to have protected speech. And if speech isn't protected, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even know. Like, I don't know. This isn't funny to me. This is just a serious question. Like, well, should they, should they be allowed to do it or not? Mm -hmm. Because you have to understand, there was no process. Nobody knows what exactly was the straw that broke the camel's back. It's just wake up, we're the platforming them. So like everybody was waiting for iTunes mm -hmm. and Apple's the biggest company in the United States. So when they decided to, to deplatform it, then YouTube went and Spotify went right after them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's gonna be gone, I, I, I'm sure. Of course, he's not totally silenced. His first amendment right isn't taken away totally. Uh, and so this is something that, uh, oh my God, it's a first amendment right. Well, hold on a second. This is the, what I'm saying. People already look at YouTube and Facebook as their right to have free and access to information. Mm -hmm. But I got a fucking newsflash for you. This right here shows that you don't have a dick worth of rights on YouTube and Facebook mm -hmm. and that it's their company and they are going to do what they want with their company. Mm -hmm. So if they see that something that Grover said is wrong, they're going to deplatform platform Grover immediately. And then our show would be ruined. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I ain't gonna talk too bad about Facebook because I, I mean I'm, I'm we <laughs> got like four episodes of just ruining it. Like, I know, we're just like, right here's our fourth episode. <laughs> we're gonna stop to that, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> here's our fourth episode. We're just gonna whip our balls out and throw it on YouTube's face. No, 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 no that's not my point. My point to this is that this is such an important event in American history right now. And very rarely do you get a platform to say your opinion on it. And my opinion is this. If we're going to look at YouTube and Facebook and these other platforms as legitimate news sources, then 100% they must, and I hate to say this, have some type of regulation that they can't just deplatformize people without due process. Mm -hmm. If we are not going to look at them as that legitimate source, then we as Americans have to get our heads out of our ass and start thinking critically mm -hmm. and stop just accepting what comes on our feet and stop just saying like, man, I really like, I really love that the whole world is just, the whole world is just liberal and everything we want. No, that's your liberal bubble because Facebook's algorithm is just feeding you what you want. Mm -hmm. And YouTube does the same thing, feeds you what you want. And people are like, no, you know, the, the majority is, the majority is red and why I live in the red states and that's why Donald Trump won, you know, and be, well, you believe that because you're just getting fed what you want. So if they're going to be a legitimate news source, then they can't do that anymore. And they, they got to make people go look and find for their news. And that's one of the biggest thing. So um, my question is, like, well, how do you think the process would change if it was regulated by the government? Like if it, like we do what we do and mm -hmm. no one tells us anything, you know, my, 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 my problem with government regulating it is someone coming here and telling me I can't say fuck or mm -hmm. I can't talk about smoking a joint or I can't talk about my experience on shrooms. Because there'd be some kind of influence that's indirectly yeah. coming down on us. I mean, especially so, talking about schedule one drugs, schedule two drugs, yeah. where all that stuff. So, so it's like, really, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it, it should be regulated. I mean, I think that it's a tragedy when you take anybody away mm -hmm. from what they're doing. Um, well, I mean, at that point, one of the solutions, and this is just one of the solutions, and it's almost a solution that I find in my brain so far being probable, is another media company that is up and coming. But the thing is, you're also going against, you know, YouTube, Facebook, but, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, but it's too far like down competition, a rabbit hole. Right? It's just too far down a rabbit hole. Okay. Like YouTube has a 10 year head start 
and uh, yeah, order, yeah. order to Extremely do it you YouTube. I yeah. love YouTube, by the way. I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker is kissing ass right. <laughs> I gotta save us, man. Just right there, just <laughs> just a model minority, right there. Model just, model. just hey, I just love it, and uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm wearing a Peninsula Self Defense shirt. I don't come here. I did go here. He did come here. Yeah, I right. did. You're right for like a month, but uh, <laughs> so but that that was just one yeah. thing. I, I mean, I, I really think this is interesting. Like, I don't like government regulation, but I don't know how else to make it so somebody doesn't have when someone has a monopoly. Like, put it this way: WhatsApp existed, and, and Facebook, Facebook brought, it, brought yeah. WhatsApp. Anything that exists, Facebook's just going to gobble it up. Yeah. You know, Instagram existed. Facebook brought Instagram. You know, that's kind of the nature of the Bay Area business right now. And these are Bay Area companies that we're talking about. These are companies like YouTube is literally right next door to New Webby. Mm -hmm. And Facebook is four and a half miles from where we are right now. And so these are Bay Area companies. And the Bay Area is really shaping uh, what the world is seeing right now. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, and that's great, but I'm really, I'm really wondering if that's such a great thing that so few have so much. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so that's one. So much like a about. perceptive power, right? It's like it's that, not that kind of influence. It's not a perceptive power. It's not a perceptive power when you actually have the power. It's not a perceptive power if I just wipe you away and wipe everything you've done away. Yeah. Well, we go back to uh, printing presses on those, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one, <laughs> of the, that's one of the things. Going to a printing press was excellent because mm -hmm. a printing press, actually, that paper was there forever. You had to burn mm -hmm. the book. But let me tell you something. If someone put a bunch of books in a square and burnt it, you think they're crazy, no matter what they're burning. The Nazis are done. Right. No matter what they're burning, you think they're crazy. Well, they just burnt down Alex Jones' whole library. Mm -hmm. But nobody thinks they're crazy. You know, that's, that's what I'm trying to get yeah, at. That is some kind of crazy <laughs> That is kind of some crazy stuff, man. They just burnt his just whole thinking about that, yeah. Because they didn't like what he was saying. Mm -hmm. I don't like what he's saying. I think he's a fucking creep. I think that he is purposely leaning towards racist people. He's purposely, along with Donald Trump in a lot of ways, uh, stoking some flames. He's stirring up the pot, for you know, sure, yeah. That is the more ugly part of the United States. I think it's hilarious that people said uh, that... Uh, they were doing the same thing with uh, that Barack Obama would do the same thing. Barack Obama divided us because he said this and that. And it's like, shut up. Barack Obama never said, I assume that some of the white people coming here are good people too. Mm. You know, that's, that's you know, and, and calling them drug dealers and rapists and this and that. And so, look. Well, I got to ask you. So for people like me who have disengaged from the news, and it's not from any kind of metaphysical standpoint or whatever. It's just getting work done. And also, he wasn't even on our radar because we already know that's just kind of, it's trash to us. It's just but, sensationalized. It's just, it's yeah, just I, entertainment I, kind of media. That, I, I find it really, are you talking about Alex Jones or? Like Alex Jones. There's a lot of other people that have well, been but pushing I find out it, I find like it really Conspiracy theories. I find it really funny that you could sit here. It's very easy to say, I don't believe in God or Allah. Mm -hmm. But the motherfucker who's blowing you up does. Mm. So you kind of got to keep an eye on people and kind of know what makes them tick. And, mm. you know, like, because even if it's not on my radar. So then or, what or do you a, think Facebook is trying to do then? Are, is they, are they trying to I don't attempt know. to have us to shed a light on Alex Jones and all his activities? I, I don't know. I don't think I know. I think Facebook is erasing Alex Jones with the block button like you do somebody who trolls you. Mm. Block. Bye, motherfucker. Mm. And then they're gone forever. And somebody up at Facebook decided to block Alex Jones and just deplatform him. Whatever reasons they say, because of hate speech, because of this and because of that, they can't. Uh, he didn't do anything differently than he's been doing for years. Mm. So why now? Mm. Why take the stand now? We lost light. We lost light. We don't have extension cords, so. All right. <laughs> we're going out. So let's keep so going. Let's go. Let's keep going. All right, because we're actually on. We're actually pretty done because it's going to be a short podcast. Right. Uh, so there's a couple of things that came on my radar that I just want to a little social commentary to. Okay. So one of the things is this. The updated death toll in Puerto Rico is now 1,427. And this is another reason why information is so important and why fake information is in doubt. 
because Trump was saying the death toll was 64 and that the Puerto Rican government himself was saying the death toll was 64. Everybody knows it's BS. There's 4,000 people still missing. Those mm -hmm. people are dead. If you can't find 4,000 people on a small island, they're dead. So what happened in Puerto Rico? There was a hurricane last year. Okay. You, did you know there was a hurricane in Puerto Dude, Rico last year? I know, and keep Okay, okay, so. There's so, just too much events, like. So, so, so this is the problem with you young mm -hmm. motherfuckers, right? You sit there and you worry about your little life. Okay, now I remember. That was from last year. I thought you were yes. talking to me something like so recent. Still, you, yeah, but you wonder about your life. Mm -hmm. And then your attention span is so small that something goes away. And then you don't realize that a year later, people are still dying from what happened. <laughs> and so, yeah, the death toll in Puerto Rican is 1427 from the hurricane. The hurricane uh, that they initially said the death toll was about between 48 and 64. Katrina's death toll was eight, 1,864. And this is why people doubt the truth. This is why people, when you say something, like if you're in Puerto Rico, everybody who came in and out of Puerto Rico, and I had a friend who went to Puerto Rico and actually helped, and he was like, there's over 4,000 people missing on that island. And this is the summertime with no water and no electricity. They're dead. Those people are dead. And so, when you turn around and say 64, it's a slap in the face. Puerto Rico, they are American citizens. They are a part of America. They are the oldest colony in the world. They're the last remaining colony that we have that we like really don't give a lot of, a, a lot of uh, rights to. Like they're literally second class citizens. They're, well, they're one of the last ones. I want to correct myself, but I believe, I believe Samoa and uh, I believe Guam are under some of the, some of the same, uh, and Saipan are under the same conditions. That they cannot vote for, for president. They're American citizens, but they can't vote for the president. So even if they, even if you're, the island of Puerto Rico votes in the primary, but that's all they get. Yeah, the territories. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, so, Puerto, and Puerto Rico has always said that if we have a problem, America will help us. And Cuba and Castro always laughed at them and say, you guys are America's dogs and America will never help you. Mm -hmm. And so we made that true. Because instead of saying, hey, we've done a great job, only 64 people have died, we should have faced reality that people were dying. And we should have went there and we should have helped them. Because they're American citizens. It's just like if there was a problem in Mississippi. Or if there is a problem, uh, there's a problem. Well, I mean, in Hurricane Katrina, we already saw yeah. how that happened. New Jersey or anywhere else, we should go there. And it should be an immediate response, and the response should be overwhelming. So it's just my social commentary that this is why people say there's fake news. Mm -hmm. Because when you come and say 64, and I know damn well when I seen that island laid down, I was like, there's more than 64 motherfuckers dead. That whole island was laid down. Mm -hmm. And now, what are people going to Puerto Rico? They're all, all a bunch of millionaires are going there and buying up stuff and they're saying, hey, we can make we can revive this economy with cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. uh, so is it good or is it bad? I don't know. But it sure does seem like it's an opportunistic uh, way of thinking. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is just really funny. And I, I don't even need notes for this is uh, immigration in the United States. So. Uh, uh, the first lady's family has just been brought over via chain migration. Do you know what chain migration is? No. So chain migration is a way that like somebody comes here and then they turn around and they vouch for their family to get their family from another country. Okay. And that's how like a lot of families, you know, someone right, saying you yeah, have yeah, a family reunited that. in the United States, right? So the biggest thing that Donald Trump has ran on is that there must be an end to chain migration. Mm -hmm. Now I think chain migration is not bad. I think that if somebody comes here legally, and they make a business or they do something good for themselves. And I think that there should be some, uh, some real and honest to goodness standards. Like if I come here and I'm driving a cab I, and my wife is here and my kids here, I'm just a cab driver and maybe I don't make enough money. I probably shouldn't be able to financially get my grandmother over here and then, or my mother, and then my mother goes on social security when she gets here or gets anything or, or any disability or anything like that. I, I should be liable for taking care of her. We can tweak those, tweak those rules and regulations, right? You know, like, I, I mean, I don't think somebody should come here and be just a burden on the system. However, What's good for the goose is good for the motherfucking gander. And Donald Trump said, we got to stop chain migration. We got to stop chain migration, right? And then his wife turns around, Melania turns around. And what do we get? Her parents over here via chain migration. 
which by the way, her dad is two years older than Donald Trump. <laughs> so look, here's the <laughs> basic and bottom line, and I don't care how ugly this sounds. She came over here, she came from Slovenia. Uh, Slovenia is probably the armpit of the world, decimated, <laughs> decimated by war. Look, it's decimated by war. She's beautiful. Uh, she, you know, she was just, just a gorgeous drop dead model. She came over. She got herself a rich man. God bless her. Mm. Hey, that rich that choice was awesome because the rich man is the president. She got her parents over here. Mm. So let's just be honest. And this is why I'm calling this social commentary. I don't talk like this a lot. Let's just be honest. When you're talking about you don't want chain migration, it is now obvious that he was talking about he don't want chain migration with some brown people. Mm. He don't want no Mexicans chain migrating. Definitely don't want no Africans. Don't want no Filipinos, not even Chinese people, really? no Indians, but them white folks, it's okay. Mm. And this is what kills me when people say, well, a white way of life in America is, is under attack. Mm. How the fuck is it under attack when the rules are well, different? So I will say with chain migration, I don't understand why somebody could say that the, the white way of life or whatever is under attack. If it's okay. Uh, you know, so what did that actually mean? I always took it to mean that people thought that so many immigrants were coming here from out, out of town that they felt like that they were being reduced, being reduced, being reduced, and their numbers were shrinking. But you're not talking about immigrants. You're not talking about the American way of life. Let's just be honest. You don't want immigrants from other people. Uh, I think that everybody should be able to say what they want to say. There's Even a, when it's not right. There's a consequence. Really, or... There is a 100% consequence for saying it. If I walk up and I slap Mike Tyson's woman on the ass and Mike Tyson turns around and punches me in the ribs, I kind of deserve that, right? I shouldn't have smacked his wife on the ass, I got punched in the ribs. If I'm here at, at a, a place where there's kids out and I'm just swearing and throwing stuff around and I'm asked to leave that establishment, I have a right to freedom of speech, but I don't have a right to freedom of speech that offends other people and that stops somebody else's business. Uh, th this Alex Jones is a lot different you know, and I think it all works into freedom of speech. And I think that somehow, I think that this may be the left's way of attacking the right, the right wing voice, a right wing voice. I think that that's- Is he, is he that much of a right wing yes, voice Yes, he's super though? right wing. He's, 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 super, he's a super Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. uh, when Trump bombed Syria, he cried and said, how can you do this to me? That's a globalist move. But would he be more of like an extremist right wing? It doesn't make a difference. Uh -huh. He has a huge following and he's a right winger. Mm -hmm. So if he's extreme or not, he has a huge following, right? Uh -huh. You know, but here's the deal. I think that some people just decided we're tired of Alex Jones. He said some stuff and they got rid of him. That's a problem. That's a problem without a process. And so I don't know if Facebook should be or if YouTube should be regulated, but I do know that whenever you start doing stuff without a process, enough people get upset, regulation's gonna come. Mm -hmm. And the government never does it the way you wanna do it. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone says, well, we're better when we're self-regulated. Government never does it the way you wanna do it. And so I think him being deplatformed is just the same as burning books. Those books could have some horrible, nasty stuff in it, but you still shouldn't burn them. Mm -hmm. People should be able to guide their families to or away from that. And just not even look at it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that a lot of other things like the migration, uh, Melania Trump, and I think we just need to really look at things honestly and say that, look, that's just another lie that's portrayed on us. And this is why I don't like Donald Trump as a president. Some of his policies, like if you say, hey, we need to be tough on the border, that's great. Well, let's be tough on the border. That's okay. That's something that I agree with. But I don't agree with separating families under any circumstance because now like a, a child died in custody mm. who was separated and that, that, that's just a bad look. And the child is dead, <laughs> you know? It's like, you can't say that they were gonna be treated humanely when someone dies. Oh, he was gonna die anyway. He was of bad health. So that's what uh, they said too. Well, I know, but I'm just saying what people can say. Okay. Oh, parents shouldn't bring their kids here and this and that. It's like, well, you know what? If they're running for their lives, then you run with your kids. You don't run by yourself unless you're a fucking coward. Mm -hmm. You know, you grab your wife, you grab your kids, or you send your wife and kids. Or if you don't have, if you're dead or your wife grabs a kid and they go. And so it's time for us to start being human beings and, and, and really get a center 
because we're not going to feel better until we do that. Until we look at something and say, this is just wrong. It's just wrong. We're not going to feel better and do it. So when it comes to ask for immunity, we have a right to go through the immunity process. A judge threatened to hold General Jeff Sessions, Attorney mm-hmm. General Jeff Sessions, in contempt because he literally, during a, uh, a immunity hearing, he deported a family in the middle of it. They didn't even have their fucking hearing. And then a judge made the plane turn around from El Salvador and come back. Those people should get granted immunity just for us being stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't just circumvent the power. And this is goes to the degradation of the independent co-equal branches, the judicial branch, the executive branch, and the Congress. And the legislative branch, the executive branch can't tell the judicial branch while you're doing your job, constitutional job, and putting this person through a process, we're going to just get rid of them anyway, would you say? That will be the degradation of our of our union, of, of the United States. I, I think that the United States is in a very particular place right now. Mm-hmm. So I can't make light of it, but I will say this. You get the government you ask for. Mm-hmm. And people ask for nastiness. This is what they got. So this was rambling, uh, but it was very important to me to get this out. I, this isn't for views or for a bunch of people to like. I'm not trying to be a likable guy. I'm just being honest. Mm-hmm. We have to get our shit together. And the right and the left are really, really, really screwing up right now. And for somebody who's an independent, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking like, wow, like nobody's paying attention. You deplatform somebody without due process because they're right wing, because they say nasty stuff, at least put it out there why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. What's gonna happen next? You keep doing stuff like that, something's gonna be regulated because people are looking at you as a legitimate news source, mm-hmm. right? You lie, you lie about immigration and then you let the immigration go uh, to a family member. That's nepotism. That's, that's the right doing that with Melania Trump's family. That's horrible. Just circumventing the judicial branch. That's mm-hmm. horrible. So that's it. All right. So this is the Happiness Podcast. Uh, it was a little, oh, wait, wait, hold on, was hold a little on. unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I know we're not doing this for likes, but please like and subscribe if you like the content today. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a special edition of the Happiness Podcast Project. This is uh, the social commentary edition. This will, people will not be laughing or thinking it's funny. We're going to put it out there and see what happens. I'm Grover Reese of Gorilla Combatives. I'm Scotty of Oric Unity, and thank you for watching. Oh, and by the way, have you tried happiness? A slice of it. Boom. <laughs> All right. <laughs>